Welcome to the Autism Intervention Training Video Series. The focus of this video is generalization. We begin by defining generalization and giving some examples across four areas. We end with some tips for increasing the chances of generalization. Let's begin by defining generalization. Once a child learns a skill, we consider it to be generalized when the child is able to perform the skill across new and novel situations. All of the skills that the child learns should be flexible and widely used in natural life situations. For example, a child should be able to count blocks while sitting on the floor with a therapist or count baking ingredients while cooking with his or her parent. He or she should be able to answer questions while sitting face to face with a therapist in a quiet room. What's your mother's name? Temple. Good boy. Uh, Push. Or when asked by a peer while playing at the park. Life is not restricted to highly controlled therapy sessions. Therefore, generalization is vital for children to succeed in life. Children need to learn to generalize skills that they have learned across four areas. They will need to generalize across people, settings, stimuli, and responses. Any new skill a child acquires should not be considered fully learned or mastered until the child is able to perform it at a consistently high level across all types of people. For example, the child should be able to label objects whether he or she is with a therapist, parent, sibling, friend, teacher, relative, or even a stranger. In addition to generalizing across people, the child needs to generalize skills across settings. The child should be able to perform the skills he or she is learning at the therapy room table, on the therapy room floor, around their own house, or at their school, or even at the park or at the mall. The next area that a child needs to generalize skills across is stimuli. The child should be able to perform skills with an endless variety of materials. For example, when learning emotions, a child should be able to identify emotions on faces drawn on flashcards. Give me happy. Happy. You got it. Look, she's really happy. Here you go. To identify emotions modeled by other people. How do I feel? Mad. I feel bored. Pretty nice trying. Bored. How do I feel? Bored. That's amazing. Wow. And to label emotions of characters in picture storybooks. How does this little girl feel? <gasps> Mad. She's very mad. She dropped her ice cream. Children should be able to work with a variety of materials. For example, they should be able to color with a wide range of crayons, markers, and pencils. Children should also be able to respond to a variety of phrasing. For example, we ultimately want a child to be able to respond correctly to touch red, where is the red one, can you find it, and so on. The final area that a child needs to generalize skills across is responses. Once a child learns a skill, he or she should be able to give a limitless number of unique and new responses. For example, when teaching how to count, we may start by having a child hand us four blocks. Generalization might include having the child count different types of items, build a tower of four blocks, or count four spaces on a game board. In other words, the child should be able to count out objects in any fashion in new situations. Another example of response generalization can be seen when teaching pretend play skills. We might begin by following a specific script, but before we are finished, the child should be able to spontaneously create new and unique pretend situations. Poor generalization is one of the most common learning challenges for children with autism. As a result, teaching generalization can be very challenging. However, there are things you can do to increase generalization. You should include plans to generalize a skill in your initial written teaching plan. 
generalization should be taught in a systematic fashion. Everyone should be aware of what step in the process the child is at. Before you begin teaching, decide when and how to introduce generalization. Some learners can begin generalizing immediately. Some learners must be able to reliably and confidently perform a skill in its initial format before it can be generalized. Some learners might have skills they can begin generalizing almost immediately, and other skills that will need to be completely mastered in their original format before they can be generalized. Carefully planning for generalization and making sure that teaching programs are not ended before they are fully generalized are two ways to increase your chances for successful generalization.